Hi everybody, this is Rick Lochtenberg from The Seed Studio. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of your website and email control panel um, that can be accessed through WebsiteSettings.com. Now this is assuming that you are hosting with either us or with um, in the Rackspace cloud. So if you are, you should be able to get to your uh, login page by going to WebsiteSettings.com. When you arrive, you get to the login screen. I want you to enter your username and password and then log in. When you get in, you're going to, you're going to see in the left column, uh, in the left sidebar here, four links. One to the websites and emails, usage report, contacts, and logout. I think the logout's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll go from the bottom up starting with contacts. This um, section simply uh, and gives you your, your contact information. Now this is useful to the host, so in the case of us it's useful for us, or for, for Rackspace. In case they need to contact you about something, uh, it's going to be through this contact information that they do that. The second um, tab here is your usage reports. This So this gives you your totals and this shows you a, a helpful graph of activity on your site over over time. So if you want to break that down, if you have multiple sites hosting on the count, you can click on the site you want to show and you'll see how that graph and those numbers break down on a site-by-site -site basis. In most cases, you only have one site, so this will give you the total for that one site. Now the most important area is the top one, your websites and emails for, for each website that you own. So if we click into um, your, your website, again, it shows you a breakdown of your bandwidth relative to the amount of traffic you have allocated f to you. So uh, your allocations are set here and the amount you've used are here. As these numbers ap approach the, li the line, y it will be time to upgrade your account. Um, a quick little breakdown here shows you your overall bandwidth that you've used, so the amount of data that's been passed back and forth between the server and um, your, your site visitors. The compute cycles uh, is, is kind of a catch-all phrase to talk about the processor and the amount of processor capabilities you're, you're taking and the amount of memory, that kind of thing. Um, so the more intensive, the more uh, that your website is, so it's using databases vigorously, it's doing all sorts of things, the, the numbers will be higher or lower. So it's a combination of how intensive your website is plus or times the, uh, the amount of traffic that you're getting. And then here, this shows you your database resources. So how much database space you have allocated to you and how much you're actually using. You can click this button here to enable your web statistics. Now if you're using Google Analytics or an analytics package like that, you don't necessarily need to turn this on. But if you'd like to, you can. You just click the button and that'll enable website statistics and, and they'll be accessible through this control panel. As we scroll down, you'll see your FTP information your, well, your general access information. So this shows you how you can, your URL and a link to your URL. If your site's offline or if it's just been set up, you'll have this testing URL that you can click to. That's before the domain name has been resolved. And then down here you have your FTP information. So this, if you have a website designer or developer who uh, needs access to your site or you want to upload files or you want to create take backups of those files this is the information you need to access it and as we continue to scroll down you're going to see um, some of the features that have been enabled for your account how many email accounts you have available to you how many databases you have available to you and so on uh, note the change password link right here okay so the next thing you tab up top here is your permissions tab. This will, um, if you want to uh, create multiple FTP users, for example, you want to create a directory that's just for that you want to upload files to, but you don't want to give general access to your site. You definitely don't want to give general access to your site, obviously, if the, because it's a it's a major security risk. But if you want to upload files and give people access to those files, you may create a new FTP user. Um, your email accounts is the next tab over and this is the section you'll use to create new email accounts. Now if you want to create a new email account you just simply click add. You then fill in the username um, which is the, the, the name that's going to course go along or correspond to the email address here. Um, contact information and password. 
Once you've done that, that email, new email address will appear here in this list. Now you're not done yet. If you, and most people do, want to forward your email account or your email box to, for example, a Gmail address, you can do that simply after you create the account. You then click on it and then scroll to the bottom and a new box appears here called forwarding address. You enter the, the address that you want to forward to and it will um, automatically set up a forwarding uh, account. Now if you're not forwarding, then you'll need these mail settings here. You'll have access to spam settings. So if you're using Gmail, you don't have to worry about this so much, but if you're um, accessing your email directly through um, Outlook or, or Mac Mail or something like that, then you'll probably want to control this. And finally, you will may also want to create aliases. That's this button here. An alias uh, is multiple, allows you to set up multiple email addresses and have them all kind of funnel into one master email account. So if I wanted to create a new email alias, I click add, and then I enter the email the new email address and then I choose which boxes I want or which email addresses I want that email address to forward to. So you see that if I set an email called team up I can have it forward to every member of our team. Click Save. So the final tab you have across the top here is called Features. Go ahead and click on that tab. You'll notice this is where you have control and access to your databases. So um, if you want to add a new database, you can do that here. Uh, if you want to get ac access uh, existing databases, you can do that here. So you can click on a database. And then you'll have all of the information about the database, including database users. And very importantly for, for developers, is access to a database control uh, panel, uh, and which is ac accessed through here. Now that gives you access to PHP MyAdmin, which is a MySQL um, administration tool. I click the back button. So that's what you need to know about databases. Um, you also have uh, information about various technologies that you have enabled on your account. So PHP 5 is generally set by default. You'll have uh, C CGI, Perl, and Python um, technologies set up. You may also use .NET and ASP. Um, so there's, there's different technologies that are available to you there. You have your cron jobs can be set up under the features uh, account. Now that's generally for developers who will want to set up tasks, automated tasks that may need to run on your website on, on let's say a daily basis or hourly or something like that. That's all set up through the scheduled tasks uh, section here. And then your paths. Now depending on the applications you're setting up or um, the content management system you might be setting up, you may need um, access to this information. This is your full server uh, side paths that will give access to the directories that you need to run your website. So that's a general and quick but comprehensive overview of the website control panel on your website settings.com account. Thanks for watching.